Here we're going to go through number three on the calorimetry practice problems. This is a good one to go through because it covers all of the phases and all of the phase changes. We're starting with a sample of steam. It's cooling down to become a liquid, then it eventually turns into a solid. And let's start by taking a look at our phase change diagram really quickly. And here uh, we can hopefully remember that in this area, we have a, a gas that's cooling off. And remember here, since we're losing energy, we're going from, from right to left. So our energy is actually, we're moving this way down the graph. And so we start up here where the gas cools down along this flat line where there's no change in temperature. It's condensing into a liquid. We turn here into a, uh, a liquid that's cooling down. Then from here to here, we're freezing, and then we have a solid that's cooling off. And so those are the, the five components of this problem. And remembering the different equations we're going to use at each point, up here it's going to be Q equals MC delta T, where delta T is a specific heat of steam. Here we have Q equals... M times the latent heat of vaporization. Here it's Q equals MC delta T again. Here we're going to have Q equals M times the latent heat of fusion. And then the last part is going to be Q equals MC delta T one more time, except there this C is a specific heat of ice. And so let's break this up a little bit more and to our individual steps. And so our first, we're going to write out our variables. The mass is 0.218 kilograms. <laughs> the initial temperature, Ti, is 121 degrees Celsius. The final temperature is negative 14 degrees Celsius. We're looking for the change in energy, which is Q. So, uh, part one, our Q is equal to MC delta T, as we said. So our mass is 0.218 kilograms. Our specific heat of steam, and it, it's going to vary a little bit, even for a given... Uh, material between the different phases. So the specific heat of steam is 1.996 1.996 kilojoules hmm, per kilogram Kelvin slide that over here so we have some more room kilogram Kelvin times the change in temperature and we know that it's starting at 121 degrees Celsius and we also know that the condensation point is 100 degrees Celsius so the change in temperature is 21 degrees Celsius which is the same as 21 Kelvin, because Kelvin and Celsius degrees are the same. So we look at this, and we see our kilograms cancel out, our Kelvins cancel out, and we're left just with kilojoules, which is fantastic. And if we calculate this through, we get 9.14 kilojoules as the loss of energy or the energy change as that steam cools down. Okay, so then the second part, zoom in a little bit here, the second part is going to be Q equals the mass times the latent heat of vaporization. Our mass is the same, it's 0.218 kilograms. Here the latent heat of fusion for our material is 2,260 
kilojoules per kilogram. Okay, so notice how much more energy it takes to melt, or to, excuse me, to condense a, or, or boil a kilogram of water than it does just to change the temperature of it by a degree. It's a pretty significant difference. And here we then get a change in energy of 492.68 kilojoules. So that's the part where we have the uh, material changing phases. Then the third step in this is to cool off that liquid. And so it's back to Q equals mc delta t. And mass is again the same. Mass stays the same throughout. The specific heat of water, of liquid water, is 4.187 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. And our change in temperature here, we have to cool it from boiling down to zero, so from 100 to zero. So that's 100 Kelvin degrees. So again, our Kelvins cancel out, our kilograms cancel out. We're left just with kilojoules as our units. And when we do the math, we get 91.28 kilojoules as the energy from that portion of the of the problem. And so we have three of our five parts done, two to go. So the fourth part, we're changing it from a liquid to a solid. So Q equals the mass times the latent heat of fusion in this case. Same mass our constant latent heat of fusion for water is 334 kilojoules per kilogram. Again, notice the difference between the latent heat of fusion and the latent heat of vaporization. It takes a lot more energy to turn something into a gas, to go from liquid to gas, than it does to go from solid to liquid because of what we're doing to those intermolecular forces. Here then, when we can't calculate this out, we get 72.81 kilojoules. And the last step is to get that ice down to negative 14 degrees. So it's a temperature change, Mc delta T, 0.218 kilograms, times the specific heat of ice, which is 2.1. Uh, 2.11 kilojoules per kilogram. And again, our change in temperature, we're going from 0 to negative 14. So it's a change in temperature of 14 Kelvin. We calculate it out, we get 6.43 kilojoules. So we found the specific energies that are associated with each of the components of this change in temperature. And so the next step then is to add them all up. And so we're going to add this plus this plus this plus this plus this equals, and when they add them all together, add each of these phases together, we get a total energy of 672.34 kilojoules. And that is the total amount of energy it takes to change the steam at 121 degrees Celsius down to ice at negative 14 degrees Celsius.